Tampa. <laughs> there we go. I caught that. <laughs> Start out the build by gluing your wings together. I'm using hot glue, but goop, shoe goo, welder, or any other adhesive works just fine. The foam is solvent resistant, so don't worry about dissolving it, and you can paint it with whatever paint you want too. You'll notice there's six parts, not four. Don't throw away the two very small parts with a little L cut out of them. These hold the booms. These go in between the center section and the section that holds the ailerons. Also, be sure not to glue your ailerons to that piece. Now you'll want to glue in your spars. Start out by cutting them about two to three inches shorter than the half span of the wing. That is, cut them between nine and 10 inches long. This will give you extra section to glue in the center where the most strain will be. Do not forget to put that center spar in or the wing might snap under high load. Here I'm simply gluing them in with hot glue after trimming them, but again any glue you want to use will work just fine. The final remaining section should be between 10 and 14 inches wide. Cut this in half and then you're going to install this directly behind your front spars. You want to glue this in solid both top and bottom as this spar actually is going to take the most strain of the wing. If you want even more strength, add a spar also to the back of the wing as a crash is going to attempt to tear the back of the wing. This step is optional. I'm adding a spar to the fuselage to help it take hard impacts and considering I wrecked the plane at full throttle and it came out undamaged, well I'd say this works. You want it to extend past where the wings meet the fuselage as this will be the break point. Here I'm simply gluing the booms in place with hot glue. Again, use whatever glue you want. Do not glue the aileron to the booms, but glue all of the other sections in securely. Check to be sure that the booms are straight with the work surface. Then go ahead and install the vertical stabilizers. These again are just glued in. You want the boom all the way in the back of the vertical stabilizers. The vertical stabilizers are simply glued in. You'll want to use a square or something just to be sure they're vertical, or you can just use the tail, but they have to be straight up and down, otherwise the tail won't fit in properly. If you look carefully on the vertical stabilizers, you'll see two alignment marks that help align the tail. Then simply hot glue them in. You can see that the alignment marks are about an inch and a half to two inches below the top. Before gluing the wings in, it's a good idea to put marks on the wing just to be sure that it gets glued in straight. And again, here I'm just using hot glue to glue it in place and then simply straightening it out just to be sure that it's lined up with my alignment marks. You might notice the airplane looks a little bit different, and that's because I laminated it just to give it some extra durability. While not required, it definitely makes it stronger. You'll also notice a little bit of the wing hangs out behind the tail, so I'm simply cutting that off. If you're going for a dual or a triple motor, you'll want to glue in the wing mounts. The wing mounts again are simply hot glued in, with the outside edge aligning with the outside edge of the boom. This puts it about two and a half to three inches away from the fuselage. Be sure it's nice and straight, otherwise the plane will not fly very straight. You'll also find there might be a little bit of extra space. For this, add a little bit of hot glue just to be sure that it doesn't come off in a crash. Here's a little trick that I learned from Sean McEwen. To keep the motor mounts from breaking off in a hard crash, simply wrap laminate around the front side of them. This works incredibly well. The motor mounts will have to be heat formed to get them to stick properly. For this, I'm simply using a lighter and a pair of pliers to heat them up and bend them in the shape. The airplane comes with enough motor mounts for three airplanes, so I suggest practicing on the motor mounts that don't fit the motors that you intend to put in the airplane. There are mounts for 11mm, 13mm, and 18mm in the kit, so practice on the other ones. It doesn't require a whole lot of heat, but it does require a little bit of patience. You'll want the U to fit tight to the motor mount so there's a little bit of pressure on the foam. 
The rear motor mount follows the same methodology of heating it up and bending it into a U-shape. However, it is not meant to be wrapped around the fuselage, but two slits should be cut into the fuselage in which the U-shape fits into. So bend the motor mount into the U-shape first, align it with the rear fuselage, make two marks, then send a knife down your slots, and you'll simply glue this in place when it's done. All of the motor mounts are simply glued in place. I use hot glue because it's removable. Should the motor go bad, I simply use a heating iron to heat up the hot glue and pull the motor off. You don't want to get any glue on the shaft of the motor. Be sure to only get it on the motor mount itself. The rear motor should be perfectly straight. However, the front motors should be angled down. You want to point the shafts at the table so they hit approximately one foot or 12 inches in front of the airplane on the table. I wired the motors to the speed control off camera because I didn't know a good way to show how it was done. But I'm simply using a multi-rotor 4-in-1 ESC in the center of the airplane to power all of my motors. The motor wires are so thin they bury in the foam just like a servo wire would. And if I blow up a speed control, I still have a spare. Now these motors don't take a whole lot of amperage, so a 20 amp 4-in-1 is just the perfect thing for this airplane. You can see that the motor wires are long enough that they just make it all the way over. This makes it extremely convenient and it works very well, not to mention being light. On this airplane, I recommend mounting the servos into the top of the wing and mounting them vertically like this rather than the bottom. This will keep them from getting damaged. Use any glue you like to secure your servos in place. Once done, now it's time to install your control horns. You can cut your control horns away from the parts tree that carried the motor mount. Use a control horn to push down through the foam, then add some glue to it and add one of the slide lock plates in place. Then again, add glue to the control horn and push it back down through, this time permanently. Then glue around the base, drop the slide lock in place and push it forward to keep it from coming out. The control rods are made from thin music wire. Take the pair of pliers and bend a Z-bend into one end. Then, if you need, you can use this as a drill to drill through the small holes in the control horn. Then, go ahead and work it down into the control horn. Then what you're going to do is bend a U-shape into the middle of this section. What this does is it allows you to quickly change the trim by simply bending this U-shape wider or narrower. Then go ahead and reinstall your control rod. Then use a pair of pliers to mark where the end of the control rod meets the control horn and cut just a little bit past it. Then bend another Z-bend here so it can fit through the control horn. I'll just remove my servo horn here, put it back together and drop it in place. If it isn't straight, I can tighten or open that U-shape to change the trim of the airplane without taking anything apart. The elevator is done the same way as the ailerons, except it doesn't get embedded in the elevator unless you want it to. Again, I'm bending the same shape. Z-bend, followed by a U-shape. Then I'm going to install my control horn. And once my control horn is in place, I know where to bend the other end of the Z-bend. Again, that U-shape helps me trim the airplane without using any mechanical trim on the radio. Again, the control horn is done the same way. Push the control horn through, pull it out, add some glue, drop a plate in, then coat it good with glue. Again, sink it back through, this time permanently, then drop the locking plate over the top and glue that in place to keep it from pulling out. You could see here, a little bit better than the previous example, what this U-shape in the control rod actually should look like and how it goes together. I like to embed my wires in the foam of the airplane, so I'm cutting a slice away from the spars. You don't want to cut a slice along the spars since these are strengthening the wing. You want to be at least a quarter of an inch to the side of the spar to make sure that stays strong. Now I'm using a hot work tool to help me open up the gaps for my servo extension of my elevator so I can better bury it in the foam here. The reason I'm doing this is that it opens the foam up more 
Otherwise, that pressure can cause the wing to warp and therefore cause the plane to roll. One thing I noticed when flying the airplane is if I crashed hard, the back of the wing would tear, and thus I added this spar later, and it seems to prevent tearing of the wing. Here you can see all of my electronics and how they're installed. This airplane is carrying full FPV gear. This isn't a micro setup. Notice I've got a full-sized camera on the nose, and I've got a full 200 milliwatt video transmitter on the fuselage. I left the battery in sideways to show you how I installed it. I simply cut a hole in the side of the airplane with a hot work tool and it's held in by friction, but I could also use a rubber band if it wasn't so tight. The finished airplane should look something like this. My center of gravity is approximately midway between the front of the wing and the spar. That is about a half of an inch behind the leading edge of the wing at the fuselage. Exactly. I recommend launching this airplane at half throttle or less and giving it a good, hard toss forward. The reason for this is the plane will want to climb on immediate power up. Of course, once you get it out there and flying, trim it out, feel free to crack open the throttle and have a good time. <laughs> 